This ain't your ordinary football show. It's the Old Dominion Football Show with Bruce Rader and Coach Bobby Wilder. Brought to you by Priority Automotive. It is already becoming one of the most exciting games on the Monarch schedule. For the second year in a row, the Hampton University Pirates gave Old Dominion fits. 87 combined points, a fan's dream. And again, it came down to the wire with ODU coming from behind to win their eighth game in a row, 45 to 42. But tomorrow, after 25 games, it is time to join the Big Boys Club. The team's first ever official CAA contest on the road against nationally ranked Delaware. A look back and a big look forward. The Old Dominion Football Show starts now. I'm Bruce Rader along with Coach Bobby Wilder. And before we get to tomorrow's game, last Saturday's game against Hampton was a great game to watch. But I could sense you were not happy. With, well, you are happy with the win, but not Absolutely. too happy with your team's overall performance. Yeah, overall, Bruce, I did not feel like we played well. I thought this was our worst football game this year against the best team we played. And a lot of respect to Hampton. I think Hampton has an opportunity to compete for a MEAC championship this year. Very good team, good quarterback, well coached. Uh, but we didn't play well. We didn't play smart. We weren't poised. What I'd like from this game is, number one, we got the win. Number two, we were challenged. First time we've been really challenged in this eight-game winning streak. Coach, five touchdowns and a field goal. Your running game was great. Agnes Harper was mm -hmm. mowing guys down. Colby Goodwin had some nice runs, too. Yeah. That's a pretty good tandem. No question. And the fact now that uh, they both had big games. You know, Colby had the big game at Georgia State. Angus goes for 115 and two touches in this game. Colby still had 80 yards. And then Thomas DeMarco rushes for two big touchdowns. The last two touchdowns we scored in the fourth quarter to get us the win. So I like where we are right now running the football with that one-two punch you mentioned, Angus Harper and Colby Goodwin. If there was one criticism about the offense, uh, maybe your offensive line wasn't as focused mm -hmm. uh, early in the game as they could have been. Yeah, I was disappointed early in the game, Bruce. We had to burn a timeout because we weren't blocking the right scheme, the scheme we had practiced all week. And Coach Scott said to me over the headset, we need a timeout. we got to get them over and get them organized. That shouldn't happen on your first drive. And that's really when I got the sense we weren't as focused as we needed to be against a good Hampton football team. On defense, an outstanding performance uh, by number 12 linebacker Craig Wilkins. Oh, my goodness. So you talk about the number one school record, 17 tackles. 12 solo tackles in this game, Bruce, and six of those 12 solo were on David Legree, their quarterback, in the open field to, to minimize a, a gain that was about five yards. That could have been 20 or 25. That's, that's making an impact in the game, and he was, in my opinion, uh, he was the best player we had on the field Saturday night. And in the fourth quarter, where did Eddie McClam come from? I mean, this guy was all over the place. Where was he the first three quarters? Right. <laughs> Eddie was outstanding, Bruce. I've been coaching for 23 years. That's the first time I've seen on back-to-back -back defensive plays the same player cause a fumble that we recovered. On the first one, Bruce, they completed a pass for about nine yards over the middle. Eddie came out of his rush, ran down the field, came from behind, stripped the receiver. And on the second one, he came from the blind side of Legree. Perfect technique over the shoulder with the right arm for the football, secured the sack. Two turnovers led to touchdowns. Big, big play out of Eddie in the fourth quarter. But uh, then that lack of discipline came mm -hmm. back to haunt you. I mean, you guys helped, what, mm -hmm. three or four Hampton drives out there because of mm -hmm. your penalties. Mm -hmm. I really thought that that was something you had put behind you from last year. Yeah, I did too, Bruce. And that's the first thing I addressed Sunday after I congratulated the kids for getting the win because you always want to make sure there's some positive in there also. But the fact that we played undisciplined, we were out there talking too much. We were out there not playing Old Dominion football. And I made it very clear to the guys, we're not going back there. That was part of our growing up process the first couple of years. We're not revisiting those situations. They completely understand it. Uh, the guys that were involved with that know. We talked about it. It really comes down to, Bruce, six seconds of aggressive execution on defense. Then when that whistle blows, you've got to pull off. And we've got to be smart, particularly against a good Delaware team this week. Would have liked to have been a fly in the wall on that meeting. <laughs> All right, now we look ahead to tomorrow, your first official CAA game, and you're not playing Villanova or Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. You are headed to Newark to take on the University of Delaware, the seventh-ranked team in the nation. They were 9-1 and one at home last year, and mm -hmm. they seem to be even better this year. Yeah, they are. This, this is an outstanding football team, Bruce. They, they came within one point of winning the national championship last year. In the last seven years, they've been in three national championship games. They've won one of them. We really, Bruce, 
have to survive that early knockout punch because it's going to come from Delaware. That's how they beat people at home. They jump on them early and just suffocate you early. We've got to embrace the crowd atmosphere. First time for us playing in that atmosphere on the road. So if we can survive that early onslaught, I think we're going to be in good shape. And once again, your special teams were very special. That block mm -hmm. punt by James Faircloth uh, was a big play against yeah, Hampton. Your kicker, Jared Brown, I don't think this guy's missed all season. Mm -hmm. uh, special teams could make a big difference tomorrow. Absolutely. And you mentioned the punt block by Faircloth. We were down at that point in the game, Bruce. 31-27, uh, that puts us ahead. Pinkard scoops it up, scores. Brown again, a 42-yard field goal into some tough weather. And then Plisco, three punts for 47 yards. So we were getting excellent productivity out of our all-star team the special teams unit. We're going to need it again Saturday. All right, we know what Coach Wilder thinks about tomorrow's big game up in Delaware. How are the players handling it? Uh, just excited that, uh, you know, the day's finally here. Um, a lot of us are just excited to go there. Uh, you know, first game is against Delaware, going to the big crowd, just understanding the, uh, the amount of, um, you know, um, respect we have for this conference and the fact that uh, we all are ready to, to see what it brings. It's going to be a grind, play in and play out, quarter in and quarter out. You really can't take any downs off because, like I said, every 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 CA game could come down to the fourth quarter. So you got to be on your P's and Q's for uh, the entire game and the entire season. And then it becomes a war of attrition throughout the season because it's just so tough playing that level of competition for eight straight weeks. They're the number seven ranked team in the nation, and they're well deserved. Of it. I mean, you know, me personally looking at the offensive line, I mean, you you have what three preseason All Americans on it, and um, you know. That's, that's just a testament in its, in its own about you know, how good of a team they are. Tomorrow he will be wearing his football uniform, but next year he will be wearing fatigues. Chad King, the biggest guy in ROTC and headed to the Army after the season, shows his stuff with Ali Lucia on the one-minute drill. And weather be damned when it comes to the pregame party at SB Ballard Stadium. Stick around and meet our tailgaters of the week. We'll be back in 30 seconds. I'm joined by Chad King. Chad, have you ever done the one-minute drill before? No, I haven't. So are you nervous? A little bit. A little bit. We'll, we'll start off with an easy one. Favorite post-game meal? Uh, spaghetti. Spaghetti. I'm an Italian. I like it. <laughs> Meatballs, too? Yep. Uh, if you could be any celebrity, who would you be? Uh, Denzel Washington. Ooh, good choice. And if you could date any celebrity, who would you date? Uh, Beyonce. Oh, Beyonce. Can you, what's your favorite Beyonce song? Uh, single Ladies. All the single ladies. Can you do, do the dance for us? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Ready? Uh, uh. Oh, 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 okay, I can't sing, so I won't sing for you. I don't have a Beyonce voice. Good choice, though. Uh, are you a pool guy or a beach guy? Uh, I'm definitely a pool guy. You know, I don't like being out in the sun too long. It gets hot out there on the beach. If you could go anywhere in the world, where would you go? I would have to say probably Italy because, you know, everything about uh, Italian lifestyle is just so like high class and fancy. You know, you got your Ferraris, you got your high, high class Italian restaurants, you know, the women out there are beautiful. So I would have to, definitely have to say Italy. You passed the one minute drill. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. Well, maybe he'll go to Italy uh, in the Army. Yeah, really an amazing story, Bruce. What people don't realize about Chad King, he was a walk on, transferred from Ohio Dominican University in 2008, become a starter, full scholarship player, having a phenomenal career. All right, last week wasn't the best day for tailgating, but the 12th Monarchs came through again. Let's celebrate with our Tailgaters of the Week. My name is Jake. Uh, I'm a student here at ODU. Uh, we're right behind Foreman Field. Uh, this is pretty much what we do here on football days. We sit here, we have some food. We have some food, we have some drinks, we have some games. We just chill hardcore. I mean, everything's pretty chill. Got a couple girls out here, some girls, some guys, just having some general fun, some pong over there. Got some kebabs, some wieners, some chicken. We got we got some pong tables over here. <laughs> Generally, it's just crazy madness. Are you planning on being a mascot at all? No, I'm just just here for fun, man. I'm just enjoying myself out here, and it's my last year, and I'm just I'm just having fun out here. Is that hot at all? A little bit, yeah. It's a little hot. Aloha, Bino. It's worth it, man. It's worth it. Go to you! And that's it. Yeah! Let's go! Let's go! Tomorrow, Old Dominion against 7th-ranked Delaware. Coach Wilder will have his 
priorities of the game, and the fans will have their shot at Coach Wilder in the Coach's Corner. The Old Dominion Football Show is back in 30 seconds. All right, Coach, time to turn it over to the fans for this week's Coach's Corner. First question. Hey, I'm Neil Henderson. And I'm Sammy Richardson. And we're wanting to ask Coach Wilder, how has the CAA changed since he arrived at ODU? Well, that's a great question. Since I've been here in 2007, we've lost Hofstra, Northeastern that have dropped football. UMass is leaving the conference to go 1A. Rhode Island's leaving in a year. Georgia State's coming in. And the impressive thing about the CAA in the last four years, they've had at least four teams every year in the 1AA National Championship Playoff Tournament. And years three and four ago, there were five teams. So the league has gotten stronger. Teams are performing well. Hi, my name is Liam from Norfolk. Coach Wilder, how did you convince Ronnie to go to ODU? How, man? He's amazing! <laughs> I assume that's Ronnie Cameron. <laughs> well, what we did with Ronnie Cameron, under that unfortunate situation when Hofstra draw football, we went up to see him, and we had the best plan and presentation for him academically. Ronnie wanted to complete his undergraduate degree, and he also wanted to receive his MBA. And, and Old Dominion provided him with the best situation. That's why Ronnie Cameron's at Old Dominion. That's why he's a captain. That's why he's going to be an All-American this year. Thanks for the question. Hey, Co hey, Coach Wilder. I'm Joey Schneider from Norfolk. How many wins do you think we need to get to the playoffs? Yeah. Yeah. Joey! Joey's ready to go to the playoffs. I love it. We've got to recruit him, Bruce. Joey, the general rule has been the last four years that if you can get to seven wins total, if you can get to seven wins, is a very good opportunity. The selection committee will choose that team. Last year, New Hampshire got to seven wins. Villanova got to seven. They were in his at-large team. So as a general rule, if you can get to seven, you're in. Thanks for the question. It's the first official CAA game in Old Dominion history. Coach, what are your priorities of the game? Well, the number one thing we need to do, Bruce, we've got to avoid that first-round knockout punch. What Delaware does so well is they jump on teams right in the first quarter. If we can avoid that knockout punch, make this a 15-rounder, we're going to have an opportunity to win the game. Number two, we've got to win the turnover battle. When you play a Delaware football team, the one thing they do is they jump on your mistakes, your turnovers. They don't turn the ball over hardly at all, so we've got to do a great job possessing the football. And number three, opportunity to win the game in the fourth quarter. What I know about the CAA from playing in it for five years, coaching for 17 years, in a CAA game, you have to give yourself an opportunity to win in the fourth quarter. That's what we've got to do tomorrow, Bruce, to win this football game. Tomorrow will be a historic game in Old Dominion football history as the Monarchs finally find out just how good they are. Coach, good luck. Thank you, Bruce. Kick off in it. Newark at noon, and we'll see you next Friday night at 1045 for the see Old there, Dominion 12 football Monarchs. show.